Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us for week two of the webinar series, Satellite Derived Annual PM 2.5 Datasets in Support of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. My name is Melanie Follett Cook. I'm a research scientist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Washington, D.C., USA. I'm joined by my colleagues, Dr. Pawan Gupta, who provided last week's webinar, Mr. Brock Blevin, RSET Training Coordinator, and Ms. Elizabeth Hook, technical writer and editor, who are also supporting this webinar series. This is week two of this three-week webinar series. Last week focused on the RCEP program, an introduction to the SDGs, and a brief introduction to the fundamentals of remote sensing. This week, we'll discuss the PM 2.5 estimates developed by the World Health Organization, or WHO. Next week, we'll conclude the webinar series with a case study analysis. This slide shows an outline of what we'll cover in today's webinar. I've also included my contact information for your reference. First, we'll briefly review session one before I describe the model used to estimate PM 2.5. Then I'll conclude by showing you the WHO website and the tools available there for accessing various levels of the data. The learning objectives for this week are to learn about the data integration model for air quality, or DMAC model, used to calculate the WHO PM 2.5 estimates, as well as learn about the available tools on the WHO website. First, we'll begin with a brief review of some relevant topics from session one. The Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, are an initiative by the United Nations and are part of the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which was adopted in 2015. They contain a set of 17 aspirational global goals and 169 specific targets, covering a broad range of issues. Goal 3 and Goal 11 specifically address the need to reduce air pollution. According to a WHO report, air pollution is responsible for one in every nine deaths, or about three million people annually. There are a number of pollutants associated with health risks, but PM 2.5 is most commonly used as an indicator of air pollution exposure. To review, PM 2.5 is particulate matter, which is another term for aerosol, with an aerodynamic diameter of 2.5 microns or less. Ground sensors give us by far the most accurate measurements of ground level pollutants. Ground sensors are indicated by the colored dots on the upper image and is not meant to be a complete list of all ground stations globally. You can see that even a heavily monitored country, such as the United States, has gaps in data coverage. For example, 2,400 out of 3,100 counties have no PM monitoring at all and this represents about 31% of the total population. Satellite data, however, can help fill these gaps. The bottom image shows the quantity aerosol optical depth, or AOD, derived from satellite observations. What immediately jumps out from this map is the extensive spatial coverage showing how satellite measurements can provide global observations even in places where surface monitoring may not be feasible due to practical reasons. This slide shows a graphic showing the relationship between aerosol optical depth, which is derived from satellite measurements, and PM 2.5, which is measured by monitors at the surface. Ground monitors measure aerosol dry mass with an aerodynamic diameter of 2.5 microns or less. This is seen as a small yellow cylinder on this graphic. Through passive remote sensing observations from a satellite, AOD can be calculated. Passive remote sensing means that the measurements depend on the sun as the sole source of radiation. Solar radiation passes through the atmosphere, hits a target, and is reflected back toward the sensor. The radiation captured by the satellite contains information about the surface and atmosphere. Aerosol optical depth is a unitless quantity that represents the aerosol content throughout the entire atmosphere column from the surface to the satellite. 
This is represented by the light blue cylinder shown in the graphic. This slide shows an example of an equation estimating or relating PM2.5 to AOD. You can see from this equation that though PM2.5 and AOD are related, various other variables can affect this relationship. For example, high levels of humidity will increase the size of particles and therefore increase the aerosol optical depth, even though the amount of PM2.5 at the surface is the same. Another variable that can influence the relationship is the height of the boundary layer, shown here as HPBL. This affects the vertical distribution of aerosols. The type of aerosol and even aerosol shape can also affect aerosol optical depth. Further complicating this issue is the fact that measurements of these important variables are very limited or non-existent. Therefore, scientists explore alternative methods to estimate PM2.5. Okay, the first poll is asking, what is the main advantage of using satellite observations to monitor air quality? I'm going to leave the poll open for about a minute. Okay, it looks like most people got it correct. Uh, the correct answer is satellite. Uh, the main advantage of using satellite observations to monitor air quality is their improved spatial cover coverage over ground measurements. They don't necessarily provide higher accuracy ground measurements. Moving on to the next poll. What quantity do satellites measure directly? Again, I'm going to leave this poll open for about 60 seconds. Okay, it looks like most people answered the correct answer. Satellites directly measure spectral radiance. The amount of aerosols can be derived using satellite measurements and we'll explore methods to estimate surface PM2.5 from these satellite measurements of aerosol optical depth. And this is the last poll for this section. True or false, the relationship between PM2.5 and AOD depends on many variables. That was true. The relationship between PM2.5 and AOD depends on many variables such as relative humidity, height of the boundary layer, vertical distribution of aerosols, and type of aerosol and aerosol shape. Um, at this point, we're going to go into the next part of the webinar. Given the importance of PM2.5 to health and air quality, many scientists and policymakers would like a comprehensive global PM2.5 data set. This is made difficult by the costs and coverage required for adequate ground monitoring. Therefore, several methods have been employed to relate aerosol optical depth from satellite to surface PM2.5. In this session, we're going to focus on methods using an atmospheric model to estimate PM2.5. For additional detailed information about this and other techniques, you can find an advanced webinar on satellite remote sensing of particulate matter air quality on the RCEP website. Using the model scaling approach, the relationship between surface PM2.5 and the aerosol de optical depth of the atmospheric column is first calculated by a model. This relationship is then applied to AOD derived from satellite observations to obtain a satellite-based estimate of PM2.5. In this next section, we're going to highlight a particular satellite-based PM2.5 estimate that is also used by the DMAC model. The method we'll review here is described in detail in the paper by Von Donkelar et al. 2016. The reference can be seen at the bottom of this slide. This method first takes aerosol optical depth calculated from eight different retrieval algorithms from four different satellites, including MODIS, 
MISER, and CRIPS. This table shows the various sensors along with their algorithms and spatial resolutions. The Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectrometer, or MODIS, sensor flies on board two NASA satellites, Terra and Aqua. The Terra satellite has a morning overpass time, while the Aqua satellite has an afternoon overpass time. MODIS covers 36 spectral bands from 405 nanometers to 14.385 micrometers. Both MODIS sensors provide aerosol optical depths using multiple retrieval algorithms. The dark target algorithm provides aerosol optical depth values over dark vegetated areas, in other words, areas with lower reflectance. This algorithm does not provide AOD values over very bright surfaces such as the desert or generally arid regions. The deep blue algorithm is designed to work over bright surfaces, and later it was expanded to include all regions. The deep blue algorithm has also been applied to ocean color, the ocean color monitor aboard the CWIPS satellite, which provide data until 2010. The ocean algorithm is a multi-spectral channel algorithm and works separately to retrieve aerosol optical depth values over the ocean. All algorithms are only applied over daytime, cloud-free, and snow ice-free pixels. The dark target and deep blue products are separate. Where they're both available, the user must decide which one they want to use. However, in the latest MODIS version, which is called Collection 6, there's a joint merged product that uses an automated procedure to choose the most appropriate product. There is an additional but not yet operational retrieval algorithm available for MODIS the Multi-Angle Implementation of Atmospheric Correction, or MIAC algorithm. MIAC is a newer algorithm developed for MODIS that performs aerosol retrievals and atmospheric correction over both dark vegetated surfaces and bright deserts based on a time series analysis and image-based processing. It also provides an estimate of aerosol type. For example, it can distinguish between background versus smoke versus dust. MISER is a multi-angle imaging spectroradiometer on board the Terra satellite. MISER makes measurements in four spectral channels and nine different viewing angles, which is a unique characteristic of this sensor. It is not available for either of the MODIS sensors. Due to these angular measurements, MISER can also provide some additional information on aerosol type, for example, scattering versus absorbing, aerosol size, small, medium, or large, and for some cases, aerosol height. The accuracy of the MISER aerosol optical depth product is equivalent or higher than that of MODIS, but a major limitation of MISER is its daily coverage, which you can see on the image on the right. Due to the narrow width of the swath, MISER takes about eight to nine days to cover the entire globe. This can be a limiting factor for day-to-day -day air quality monitoring, but the data is still very useful for various other applications. As discussed last week, satellites do not make direct measurements of aerosol optical depth. AOD is retrieved using inversion algorithms. Therefore, uncertainties in the retrieved AOD values will vary across different regions of the world. The AeroNet network is an extensive ground-based network of sun photometers. Aerosol optical depth from AeroNet is frequently used for ground validation of satellite measurements, which is one of the most important parts of making measurements by satellite. The picture on the right shows each aerosol optical depth retrieval on the top and bottom rows along with aerosol optical depth from an atmospheric model on the bottom right. For this plot, the average of the Terra and Aqua AOD values is shown for the three MODIS retrievals. 
ground-based aerosol optical depth from the Aeronet network was used to assess the relative accuracy of each of these AOD retrievals, as well as the modeled AOD. These retrievals were then combined using weighted averages based on those errors. You can see characteristics from each AOD source contribute to the combined aerosol optical depth product seen in the middle plot on the right. Once a combined satellite aerosol optical depth is obtained, the next step is to use information from an atmospheric model to estimate PM2.5. Again, though near surface PM2.5 and AOD are related, their relationship can be highly variable and is dependent on variables that aren't necessarily observed. Because of this, a model can be an invaluable tool when trying to estimate PM2.5 across the globe. On the left, you can see the combined satellite and model AOD estimate from the previous slide. Next, the ratio of near surface PM2.5 to AOD is taken from a model for each grid cell and applied to the combined AOD to calculate their global PM2.5 estimate. Next, geographic weighted regression or GWR is used to further correct the PM2.5 estimates from the previous slide, seen in the map on the left. GWR is a statistical technique that calculates the relationship between PM2.5 from ground monitors and other related variables such as simulated aerosol composition, terrain elevation, and indicators of land use. The relationship between the monitor data and these other variables is then applied to grid cells that do not contain monitor information. The resulting product is a global annual mean estimate of PM2.5, the spatial resolution of 0.1 by 0.1 degrees and can be seen in the map on the right for 2010. The von Donkeler approach described here provides annual mean estimates of PM2.5 from 1998 to 2015. This data set can be accessed from the Socioeconomic Data and Application Center, or CDAC site, for 1998 to 2012, or directly from the University of Dalhousie website for these and later years. Though the von Donkelar and other methods provide multi-year global PM2.5 estimates, they do not provide an analysis of the uncertainties associated with these estimates. Seeking a standardized method, the WHO and the University of Bath have developed a method to calculate both PM2.5 estimates along with their associated measures of uncertainty. True or false, AOD can be derived from both ground-based and satellite observations. I'll leave this open for 60 seconds. Okay, it looks like most people got the correct answer, which is true. AOD can be derived from ground-based observations, such as in the Aeronet network and from satellite, such as in MODIS, Pfizer, and CWIFS, which we just discussed. Moving on to the next poll. True or false? One of the most important aspects of satellite remote sensing is validating satellite data with ground truth. Okay, and it looks like most people got this one as well. The answer is true. Ground validation of satellite measurements is one of the most important parts of making measurements by satellite. And our last one for this section. In the approach just, just, just described, the scaling approach, what is used to represent the relationship between AOD and PM2.5? OK, 
Okay, and it looks like most people got this correct as well. The ratio from an atmospheric model is the correct answer. The combined satellite and model AOD estimate is uh, related to PM2.5 using the ratio of near surface PM2.5 to AOD from a model for each grid cell. We'll proceed with our next section. In this section, I will describe the DMAC model and the model input variables used to estimate surface PM2.5 globally. The data integration model for air quality, or DMAC model, estimates surface PM2.5 and associated measures of uncertainty at high spatial resolution by utilizing information from multiple sources. Currently, only annual mean estimates for the year 2014 are available. The sources of data include population data, ground monitor data, and other information about local monitoring networks, simulated PM2.5 estimates, satellite-based estimates, and topography and land use information. We've already reviewed the satellite-based estimate used for this work. So now we'll briefly discuss each of these additional variables. The population data set used was obtained from the Gridded Population of the World, or GPW, database. These data are provided at a very fine resolution of 0 0.0417 by 0 0.0417 degrees and are then aggregated to a larger resolution of 0 0.1 by 0 0.1 degrees. This plot shows the 0.1 by 0.1 degree map of population estimates used for 2014. The GPW version 4 used here uses population and boundary data from hundreds of organizations, including national statistics offices, mapping agencies, and planning agencies. Measurements from ground monitors were available for locations reported within the WHO Air Pollution in Cities database. The figure in this slide shows the locations and annual mean PM2.5 for each of the 6,003 monitors. Where data for 2014 were not available, data from other years were used and the percentages are shown on this slide. Also, where only PM10 data were available, local conversion factors were used to convert this data to PM2.5. Where available, in addition to the annual mean to PM2.5, additional information about each ground monitor was used in the analysis. This information included monitor location, monitor site type, and whether PM10 had to be converted to PM2.5. GeosChem is an atmospheric transport model that simulates both the meteorology and the chemistry of the atmosphere and includes key aerosol groups such as sulfates, nitrates, ammonium, organic carbon, black carbon, mineral dust, and sea salt. Again, PM2.5 is simply the dry mass of aerosol with an aerodynamic radius less than 2.5 microns. It can be comprised of any combination of the above aerosol types. The map on the left shows the sum of simulated sulfate, nitrate, ammonium, and organic carbon, or SNAOC, for 2014 from GeosChem. And the map on the right shows simulated dust from GeosChem for 2014. These two quantities were used as inputs to the DMAC model. In the Von Donkeler study discussed earlier in this session, topography and land use variables were found to be a significant predictor of PM2.5. Therefore, for each ground monitor, two quantities were calculated. One, the difference in elevation between the ground monitor elevation and that of the surrounding grid cell, or ED, and two, the distance to the nearest urban land surface, or DU. The resulting quantity, ED times DU, was calculated for each 0.1 by 0.1 degree grid cell for 2014.
The DMAC model contains a nested hierarchical structure spanning point locations, grid cells, countries, regions, and super regions. The unique hierarchical structure of this statistical model produces calibration equations for individual countries. And where information for a particular country might be insufficient for accurate estimates, this model can supplement with regional information. In other words, ground monitor information is available at the point location level. The population estimates, simulated aerosols, satellite-based PM2.5 estimates, and topography and land use information is all on the grid cell level. However, some countries have little or no ground monitor information, forcing the DMAC model to go one step higher into, into the hierarchy to obtain that information. Calibration equations are functional relationships relating an expected value of an observed quantity to a measurement. Therefore, first, only grid cells containing measurement locations are considered. After the calibration equations have been developed and tested, the model is used to calculate predictions at other locations to create a global estimate of PM2.5 and their associated measures of uncertainty. Which variable, which input variable does the DMAC model use to estimate PM2.5? I'll leave the poll open for 60 seconds. Okay, the correct answer is all of the above. As input variables, the DMAC model uses satellite-based PM2.5 estimates, ground monitor measurements of PM2.5, as well as simulated aerosol information from an atmospheric model. Our last poll, true or false, the WHO PM2.5 estimates generated by the DMAC model are only available for one year. 2014. Okay. True. The WHO PM 2.5 estimates generated by, the, generated by the DMAC model are only available for one year. The Von Donkelar estimates we showed earlier are available for multiple years. I am now going to start the final part of our webinar. In the last part of this session, we'll review the WHO website where there are several ways to quickly view the data as well as download the full graded data set we've talked about here. The WHO website provides access to the data at several levels. First, we'll focus on the country level. And at this point, I'm going to minimize the presentation to show you these links live. So first, I'm going to, you can see the page that we just saw in the presentation. Clicking View Data will take you to a page where you can download the 2014 country level data in several formats. You can download in CSV, XML, Excel, etc. You can also filter the data by indicator or year, for which there are actually only one choice each. So if you click Filter Table, you get this. Indicator, there's only PM2.5. And year, there's only 2014. If you click residence area type, there's the choice between urban or total. And when you click country, you get a list of all available countries. If you click the countries of interest, we'll just click Afghanistan and Albania here. Click apply. And you get your subset of data set. And you can download that filter data set on this top line. If we go back to the main page, this view interactive map slash graph 
takes you to this interactive map. On this, mousing over individual countries will show you the countrywide estimate for 2014, as well as where that country ranks globally. You can see China has an annual average PM 2.5 concentration of 59. And you can see on the bottom, I can't move my mouse, otherwise it'll disappear. You can see where that ranks globally. You can see the country with the highest is Saudi Arabia at 127. And in this way, you can sort of peek around at each of the individual countries and see where they fall. Going back to the main page, you can also access the gridded data we've discussed earlier. If you click on this interactive map, it'll take you to this page, which shows you the grid of data we have described. When you zoom in, you can see not only the grid of data, but data for individual monitoring stations. And each of these circles uh, is proportional to the population size of these given cities. From this main page, you can also link by clicking View Data, Metadata, and Detailed Methods of Estimation. We'll bring you to this page. You can access the previous interactive map. This will help you download the CSV file containing the entire set of gridded PM 2.5 estimates. This is a link to the Shattuck et al. paper that describes the DMAC model in detail that we referenced um, just a short time ago. And this links to an Excel file containing the metadata for the PM 2.5 estimates. To look at city level data, the main page provides maps of city level PM 10 and PM 2.5. Clicking this view data link will allow you to download an Excel file containing all of the city level data. When you click on the maps, this shows the annual mean concentration of PM10 from 2008 to 2015. And this shows the city level map for PM2.5. So in this way, you can use this website to very quickly view or download many different levels of the data. The CSV file containing the full gridded data set is actually very long. It's approximately 1.4 million rows. Therefore, my colleague, Dr. Pawan Gupta, has kindly subsetted these gridded estimates by country. These separated country files, along with a README file, can be obtained at the NASA AVDC site, accessed by the link shown here. This brings this week's session to a close. Homework for this session will be due by March 28th, the day before our final session. I also want to remind everyone that the homework and slides are also available in Spanish. Next week, we'll conclude our webinar series. Before next week, please download and test the QGIS software. Please also download at least one or two individual country files for analysis. In addition, if you're interested in subsetting the country estimates further using county or city shape files, please make sure to have those downloaded and ready as well. Next week, we'll experiment with mapping, subsetting, and analyzing the PM 2.5 estimates we've talked about today. Thank you for your attention. I will pause before I begin to answer questions. Thank you. Here, uh, how, is, how does the DMAC model estimate PM2.5 over areas where they don't have ground-based measurements? Um, that is a, that's a great question. So the model is trained um, using, uh, using the relationship between PM2.5 measured from ground monitors um, and how it relates to these other variables. And based on these calibration functions calculated, um, they use those relationships to apply them to grid cells that don't contain uh, monitor locations.
The question, using satellite data, is it possible to track particulate matter? Um, oh, did you already answer this? <laughs> um, you can absolutely see plumes and plume transport using satellite data. Um, so I would say yes, absolutely. There are a number of web-based applications you can use to view um, satellite images and see, for example, fires or dust events. Um, I believe Powen showed um, several RGB images from MODIS and other sensors showing that you could actually sort of even visually see uh, the different types of aerosols. question, what improvement is expected in DMAC in the future, if any? Um, we're, we're not sure. We're in, we have had discussions with um, the writers of that paper, but um, we're not sure about timelines as far as other years or any modifications to the model. One question is, what is the DMAC model? The DMAC model is the data integration model for air quality. Um, that's what DMAC stands for. It was developed by the World Health Organization and the University of Bath to use satellite-based PM2.5 estimates, uh, simulated aerosols, and other various inputs to provide uh, high-resolution gridded estimates of surface PM2.5 along with their associated measures of uncertainty. Another question, how do the population data help in the estimation of PM2.5? Um, the population data are just one of various uh, variables input to the DMAC model. Um, high population areas are going to be associated with higher levels of pollution in general. Um, that's one way I can think of off the top of my head um, as an input to the DMAC model. Okay, I'm seeing another question. Um, how can we apply the model in ArcGIS software? Um, next week we're going to be taking the gridded estimates we've discussed today and uh, using the QGIS software to map the data, subset the data, um, change the color scale, things like that, um, and calculate basic statistics. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Um, another question, are we able to estimate PM2.5 from satellite? We have estimates. Um, <clears throat> they vary in how, in how they evaluate against ground measurements, but there are various ways to be able to estimate PM2.5 from satellite. One is a simple statistical method, which we didn't really address today. One is using an atmospheric model, which we talked about, and there are other more complicated methods. Um, for more detailed explanations of these various methods, there are advanced webinar trainings on the RCET website under the Health and Air Quality category. I have a question. Um, any version of QGIS in any satellite data? Um, we won't be using satellite data in the QGIS software. We are going to be using the gridded data that we've discussed today. You can either download the full gridded data set um, the global data set from the WHO website, or you can visit the NASA AVDC website uh, that is linked to in the presentation and download uh, the gridded data set for an individual country. It might be a little bit easier to handle. Um, let's see. To the person, um, saying that they're having trouble opening the interactive map because it took you to a link to a blood glucose map. It did the same thing to me. I am not sure why I cleared my cache. Um, I have yet to be able to figure it out. Um, I did open it. I did try opening it in a different browser, which helped. Okay. Uh, resolution. If detailed information is obtained. The, the DMAC output is available on a 0.1 by 0.1 degree uh, horizontal resolution. Um, it, it can't be any finer to, to go, because that's the output resolution of the model. 
Um, to go finer, you would need point location information, ground monitors. Um, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I hope that answers your question. Okay, I think that ends our session for today. Um, hopefully, most of you will join us for next week, where we are going to use the QGIS software to view the data and explore um, some other websites that are relevant to this topic. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>